Well, hello everyone, Brandon Bonifer here, and today is a very, very exciting day. You are looking at the Surface Duo by Microsoft. I just picked this device up last night. Today is September 10th, the release date of this device, and I am going to show you guys a first hands, on hand review with this product. Now, I've watched a lot of videos over the last few weeks um, as I anticipated the arrival of this. And it was just, it was really intriguing to see some of the videos and the people show the hardware and what it was, but not be able to show what the actual device was going to look like turned on. So you can only imagine when I first got this device and turned it on, what was my expectations? And I'm going to get into that. First, I want to talk to you guys about the actual device and my first impressions of the hardware. This here is my iPhone, and you can see that the height is about the same. The thickness is pretty close to the same. The biggest difference is the overall width. It's considerably larger uh, as far as width goes. But when I put the device in my hand, for a guy, it fits my hand very nicely. It's a little larger than what I would have expected, but it's very nice. I open it up and it fits really, really smoothly. I can put the device down and I can simply lay it flat. Overall, very, very happy with this device, but super thin. Even though it is super thin and as wide as that it is, this hinge right here is really built. It feels strong. It feels like it's a grade A uh, hinge. And that was one thing I was nervous. And as you sit here and you fold this device back and forth, you have a lot of confidence in the device itself. Overall, I think the hardware looks great. And there's plenty of videos out there that talk just about the hardware. But today, this morning here on September 10th, launch date is 523. So I apologize if I'm a little quiet, but everybody in my house is still asleep. Uh, but let's go into the device itself. Uh, the fingerprint uh, reader on the side. At first I was a little caught off guard by this, but it seems that it works pretty slick. As you can see, I can easily open the app, close it, click in the fingerprint, and it opens pretty quick for me. Now, I did go out and I did get a pen, and a lot of this review uh, is going to be about handwriting and note taking. There's a lot of multitask features to this device, and that was what really made me excited about it, is I am someone that likes to do a lot of handwriting and note taking. Matter of fact, for those that already follow our channel, uh, you guys know that I have a digital planner, which I use across my Surface, my iPad, my Samsung Note, and many other devices. So if you guys are interested in digital planning or digital note taking, please subscribe to my channel and learn more about that app and what it is we do there. But first off, let's just look at this particular device. Now. You can easily slide between um, windows and it, it slides really nice. You also have the ability to have your notifications here while still having a home screen on the side here. One thing I noticed is whenever you open an application, for example, if you open up your internet, you'll see all the tabs here jump to the left. One thing I really had a hard time with was at first like sliding the clothes. It wasn't functionality working out for me so well, but I think that's a software thing and I think those are things we're gonna see in updates here pretty quick. But again, if I open it up, well, let's go here to foxnewschannel.com, loads pretty quick, here's a search engine, we'll go to official site so you guys can see that. And again, this is pretty nice, but now I can take this, I can click and drag that and put it across this page or I have the ability of putting across both pages. Now you can see that split screen view um, doesn't look too bad, but if you were reading it, it might be challenging. But now if I go ahead and I flip it up like this, to me that is actually pretty, pretty impressive. Um, you got a nice display. You know, this here is a 5.6 inch display when you look at it like this. But when you turn it so that it is in the tablet mode, you are now at an 8.1 inch display. And again, where I see this is gonna be huge is where I am doing productivity, trying to do note taking. So say maybe I am reading about something on the web, maybe I'm studying, maybe I'm reading 
an article, I can go ahead very easily and I can jump into a note here and I can start just note taking. So we'll jump over here and I'm just going to go ahead and write a quick note so you can see that. Now I've been using this device for uh, probably an hour and a half total. And first off, my experience with note taking um, was very, very content with it. I mean, when I take notes on a Samsung Note, the fact that the screen is thinner has been a challenge for me. And I notice with the Surface Dual here, I'm able to write a lot easier. I'm trying to think about what to write and and talk at the same time. So if my sentence here does not make sense, you get the idea. Uh, but I've been finding that as I've been using it, I become more and more comfortable with the actual writing process that I see that this could be my daily driver moving forward when it comes to note taking on the go. Now to close an app, you can simply slide up like that. I'll bring it back to this home screen. You can also bring it up and you'll see all your apps that are currently open. Uh, but if you wanna go ahead and just double click this, I find if you do it real quick, it does um, close for you, but I've been having troubles with it. So like if I go in here and you'll see if I, on this little bar line here, if I double click, for the most part, it would close each and every time that I was using the app. Um, and I think that's something that we're gonna see some fixes and software enhancements. Um, that's the only real glitch I noticed is trying to open and close apps. Now I come from a world of using the iPhone and Samsung where this slide up mentality uh, to reveal a home button or to simply review the home screen is something I'm very natural to. A lot of the hardware that we see in this device is actually hardware that was introduced in phones in late model years last year. Uh, this here, like I said, is a 5.6 inch screen and an 8.1 inch screen when it's fully unfolded. It has glass on both sides of the screen. Everything in this case is glass. Now I do have the bumper I installed, and I think that's a good idea. It seems to add a little extra protection. More importantly, it seems to give me a little bit of something to grab onto. There's a little lip that's right here. That's really nice. Also too, one thing I found was really interesting about this is this is the Surface Pen Slim. It slides on and it's magnetic. So I can sit there and have a pen attached to it. Now, do I wanna be all over the place with this? Probably not, I risk losing it, but for having a quick um, way to attach this and carry it, uh, I feel pretty comfortable with it. It does have uh, a pretty good pull resistance. Um, obviously when you fold it like this, it's kind of stuck in there. I can definitely still use the device to do so. But for the most part, uh, it's just a nice little place to have storage. So we'll see what, what the Surface and Microsoft do. This is the first version and I think we're gonna see this device really come a long way. And that's what really is exciting for me. I'm very, very happy to see this device and see where it's headed. But let's talk a little bit more about some of the features. We talked about that fingerprint scanner and I think that is huge. It's positioned really nice. Now when I set this up, I actually added my thumb twice and my index finger once. And I noticed since doing that, the recognition uh, of the device has been a lot faster. So when I go ahead and click on that, it's been a, it's been a lot faster to open. You can see it's pretty quick there. Uh, when I did it just once, it seemed like it was a little bit of a delay in opening it, but it's been a lot quicker uh, since I put in that uh, second device. And I apologize if I look a little honky trying to open and close this. I've only had about an hour to work with this. But we talked about the dual screens, but let's talk about some of the things that really make this a productive a piece of hardware and software. Now, when we looked at um, this dual screen application, you instantly think multitasking. And everybody I talked to is uh, about this device when they asked me, what's your goal with this? And I said, well, it's about multitasking. No different than having two screens at your desk, you now have two screens in front of you. So one thing that uh, Microsoft did is they gave you the ability if you go ahead and you click on an app like this, you can see where it says groups. Now I can go ahead, I can tap on groups and I can go ahead and I can select two apps. So the first one we're gonna select here in this case is going to be OneNote. 
because that is the app that I'm going to choose with it. And then the other app is Outlook, which maybe that's, yes, it says select another app to pair with Outlook. So I already have the Outlook app selected. So we're gonna pair that with OneNote and hit done. Now it gives me the ability to swap which screen orientation I'm right-handed. So I'm gonna want my note-taking app on my right and my email app on my left, and I hit OK. And then what it does, it creates this new app group. Now if I simply click on that app group, it opens up my email as well as my OneNote. So now I can go ahead and I can click on an email and from there, I could take notes. And this is one of the big powerhouse tools that I have is so often when I'm going through my email, I want to take notes about different messages, different tasks, different assignments that are in my email. So many of us use our email as a task manager. And for someone that has a planner, I really want to use my email as a means of just communicating and my planner as a means of managing my daily tasks. So like if I was in here today, you know, Michelle here sent me an email. I want to follow up with Michelle. So I'm going to write follow up with Michelle. And to me, this is awesome. You can do this at your desk. You can do this in your lap. You can do this um, essentially everywhere. And now I can simply go through my email and continue to uh, delete emails, reply to emails. The other thing I thought was really cool about this is the ability to have the keyboard function. So I'm going to go ahead and go into no my note taking app. I'm going to turn it in this fashion. I'm going to bring it up so it's full screen. So now it's full screen across here, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to click right here my finger and now a couple times this has been a little challenging it hasn't worked right away and again I think this could be software but you can see now it loads the keyboard so now I can basically tilt this wherever I want and this is pretty cool I mean this thing is any viewing angle that hinge is very solid I can go ahead now and I can go ahead and type a message type a message so it allows me to have my planner on the top and my keyboard at the bottom. So if I don't want to be someone that is constantly using some type of utility, writing utensil, I can easily go ahead and type. One thing I also found that was really cool is if you go ahead and click on this button here, there's a resize tool. Now this gives you a lot of options. You can slide that keyboard in different spots. I thought that was neat because if you're maybe typing this on your lap or some type of elevated place, you might want to be able to put the keyboard a little higher up so you have more room for your fingers and your palms to set. Maybe you want to have a little more screen space, real estate, you can bring it down, but then you can also go ahead and resize the keyboard and you can see how the keys got a lot bigger. And I think this is something that people are going to use and they're going to find, Hey, how does that layout help me out? What spot in the screen do I best want to have the keyboard and find a position? Now, does this work across every single app universal or can you go into each app and change the position of the keyboard i don't know the answer to that but i do know um, in this particular app it is really cool and then you also have the swipe the text feature uh, which is i think is still a genius um, keyboard functionality for typing so again this thing i think is going to be uh, a powerhouse when it comes to just multitasking uh, some examples, like I said, note taking, web browsing, dual la launch applications. You know, there's just so many times that I can think of uh, this being huge. Even it'd be something where you're uh, messaging somebody and you're going through your email. You know, a lot of times I will have my email open, and if I want to go full screen, um, I can do so, but I can go full screen. And like I said, like I said, this, there is some, a little bit of a, uh, it's going to be something I imagine it's going to take me a little bit of time. I can go ahead and I can probably create a new email here and I'll pull in the new email here, but keep my old email here. I think this part is huge. Think how many times that you want to type a message in your phone, but you don't recall uh, what the person was or the questions that they asked you. So you find yourself like minimizing your new message and going back. I think this is going to be huge. And you can see you can type your new message here and read your old message there. 
and then you can close that that way and close that back way and get that back to the home screen. So those are some of the big things I noticed in the multitasking. I'm definitely going to dive into this for a few days and really uncover some productivity apps, uh, really showcase how I'm using this, use this as my daily driver. So please, uh, if you're interested in this device and want to learn more, go ahead, subscribe to our channel, uh, learn about our planning system. It's something I think a lot of people are going to benefit and it's going to be a great a, a companion to the Surface Pro. My overall first impressions, I am really excited about this device. It has a lot of things uh, that really make me um, want to use this or, or take the time to learn it. Uh, the form factor I think is just intelligent. Uh, it feels good. Uh, you know, learning about this device and seeing it come to reality, it's been quite a ride. Uh, and I'm really excited to see where Microsoft takes this. You know, it's the first generation and we know it's going to improve and we know it's going to get better. You know, there's certain things that I want to see improve. I apologize, it's five o'clock in the morning. So when I turn this on, you're going to get a little hint of what I look like. But the camera is something that um, is something I'm not overly excited about. Um, you know, you have the ability to, you know, see side by side the video. Um, you know, it's still pretty good. It is still pretty good when it comes to terms of its 11 megapixels. Uh, but I don't know if it's going to be something that I am going to be overly excited about using. I mean, definitely having it with me is going to be a plus, but I don't think it's going to be like as exciting as using the iPhone or the Samsung uh, Note or 20 series that just came out for, for uh, photography and video taking. But for having a camera uh, on a device uh, like this, I think is going to be huge. Uh, being able to do Zoom calls, uh, especially now with virtual learning and be able to note take simultaneously or be able to view documents as you're on that application, I think is going to be huge. Um, but it is right here. There is only one camera. The other thing too that's been kind of disappointing for me a little bit is the music. Um, there is only one speaker and you can hear from this device that the audio is coming from this side. Now, if you're watching a video or something and you're in this mode, it makes total sense. Uh, but if you are looking for that surround sound that you started to be uh, comfortable with and expect from like iPads and some of the newer tablets, uh, you're not gonna see that with this device. Um, the audio though does sound pretty good. So having that feature uh, as a part of this um, device, I think is is definitely a win. But that is my overall first look at the new Microsoft Surface Duo. I think it's gonna be a powerhouse when it comes to note taking. If you guys have questions about uh, any of these applications or how some of the settings work, by all means, hit me up. I will try to learn more about this device and share that with you. And as you can see here, these are some of the settings uh, and there's a lot that is to be determined yet uh, as today is the first day that we're going to see a lot of people get their hands on this device and start to use it. Uh, I'm Brandon Bonifer. Thank you for following me and uh, guys, I'll see you in the next video.